Hello, welcome to part 7 of the Brick Breaker tutorial. So, so far we have a game working where we've got the ball moving around, um, we have score in the bottom left corner, and <clears throat> we have lives in the bottom right corner. You can see there that I am losing lives, and I'm also going to a lose world if I lose all my lives, and I'm going to a win world if I get all the bricks gone. Um, Next up, we want to start to have a little fun here. Let's let's see if we can add some sound. So, what I've done here is I've downloaded some some uh, sound files. So here from the internet, one called Bonus Life and one called Brick Break. And if I play, for example, uh, Brick Break, I'll just play it here with VLC. You can barely hear it, but there it was. We get that kind of sound, just like a little blip. And what I want to do is I want to play that sound every time I hit a brick. So what I need to do is I need to make sure that this file, Brick Break, is in the right place. It needs to be in the folder where your project is. So for me, you can see right at the top of my screen it says Brick Breaker Tutorial. This is the folder that matches, and in here are all the files that make up my game. And you can see there's ball, brick, counter, game over, lots of things that make up my game. I want to go into the sounds folder, and this is where I need to put that file. So let's go back to the desktop. I'm going to get Brick Break, and I'm going to drag it. I'm going to hover over this folder, and I'm going to put it into the sounds folder. Now, the game will actually recognize that sound as long as I code it properly. So I'm going to go into the ball code, and in the place where the ball hits the brick, it's starting to get a little busy in there. Here's what I'm doing when the ball hits the brick. I'm doing all this stuff, and I'm going to add one more thing. I'm going to add greenfoot dot, and then I'm going to hit control space, and you notice one of the things we see is play sound. And I'm going to put in double quotes the name of the sound file. Now for me, my sound file is called, let's bring it back up here, my sound file is called brickbreak.wav and it has to be exactly that. So I am going to copy this whole thing and I'm going to paste it right there. So brickbreak.wav you have to have the file extension, and it has to be either a WAV file, it can be an MP3 file, but that is the file that lives in the sound folder. So when Greenfoot tries to run this line of code, it will look in the sounds folder, and if it doesn't find a file named that, then it's not going to work. So this line of code plays a little blip sound. So let's see if it works. There it is. So there you go. Lots of excitement there. But what I can do, now that I know how to do that, is I can play music in the background. I can play a sound when I clear a level. Um, I can do all kinds of stuff. So just as a quick little example of another thing I could do, um, let's go back here. And here's bonus life. So I'm going to take bonus life, and I'm going to put it into the same folder. So Brick Breaker Tutorial, Sounds. And when I do that, I'm going to write a little bit more code, and I'm going to say uh, if brick count, let's say if brick count gets to 15, we'll make it a little pretty easy here, but if we hit 15 bricks, let's play that sound. So I'm going to copy this line of code here paste, and I'm going to call this bonus life dot wav, and <clears throat> since you can probably guess what's going on here, we're going to we're going to actually award another life. So the lives counter lives in my world, so I'm going to type my world dot control space, you can see there's lives dot, and then I'm going to add one. So if we hit a brick, and it turns out it's the 15th brick, we should hear a bonus life sound. And I'm going to warn you that this one might be loud, so 
just cover your ears because the bonus life sound is a little bit more intense than the brick break sound. So we're at seven, eight. I should have made it a little smaller maybe for the purposes of this tutorial. Uh, we're getting there. Four more. Three more. Two more. And like I said, get ready. Make sure your volume is not too high. And there we go. We got our bonus life occurring. And you can see down here, I now have four lives. So, awesome. We can, also, we can actually add, like I said, we can have music kind of playing in the background the whole time. And we can add sound effects anywhere we like. Um, the other thing you can do too is you can um, you can make your own sound effects. I mean, most people have a phone these days. You can record some sound effects on your phone, transfer them to your computer, and then you've got your voice right in your game. Very cool stuff. And if you're looking to edit any audio files at any time, I highly recommend the program Audacity. Audacity is an open source, free program that you can download from the internet. And what you can do is you can drag wave files mp3 files in here and you can edit them if you need to so just a little plug there for a program that i really like okay so um, we've talked about sounds now let's talk about images so here in the images folder we haven't really put anything in the images folder ourselves but you notice that all of these things are things that are involved in our game whenever we import an image to our game Greenfoot puts it right in here. So I can add as many images as I want, and I can load images in a very similar way to what I did. So I just want you to be aware that um, I can create Greenfoot images in code as long as they live in here. So I just wanted to bring that up because it's a lot like sounds. I can have any sounds I want in the game as long as they live in here, and I can have any images in the game as long as they live in here. Okay, um, but what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just make some different bricks. So I'm going to click. I'm going to click on the world, and I'm going to take away one line of bricks. So I'm going to change that to a four, and now you can see I only have four line bricks, and I'm going to put in a different brick. So I'm going to put in a brick, and I'm going to call this. Uh, let's call this blue brick and you can imagine why because I do have a blue brick that I'm going to import I have it on my desktop I went online I took a, a screenshot of a blue brick there it is and so now I have a blue brick here and I'm gonna go back to my world and I'm gonna copy this interior line here or this loop I should say uh, because what this does is it adds eight bricks in a row and I'm going to paste but instead of adding my quote normal bricks I'm now going to add this blue brick object and notice that Y is out of range here because I'm not inside this loop anymore so I have to decide exactly where I want this to be so I've got to do some quick math here and I notice that the first row of bricks, so the top row of bricks is at 15. The next one is going to be at 37, I believe. So it's going to go up in multiples of 22. So I, I want to make sure this number is right. It's going to be somewhere around 103 or something like that, I think. Close. Um, <clears throat> and you can see that the bricks aren't quite you know they don't look exactly like the other ones and that's because I haven't scaled them so what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to create a constructor inside of the blue brick class and this is where I'm going to scale the image so every time a blue brick is created I'm going to get the image and I'm going to scale it to match all the other bricks, which I can't remember exactly how big they are. I think they might be like that. Something like that. Pretty close. Okay, and so now the bricks look similar. Now, if I play my game right now, you'll notice that those bricks aren't going to go away. And that's because I haven't coded anything yet to make them go away. But I'm going to show you a different technique here. 
because I'm going to make the blue bricks such that we have to hit them twice in order for them to go away. So I'm going to go back to blue brick here, and I'm going to put a variable at the top right here. I'm going to call it int, and I'm going to call it health. Sorry, it's of type int, so it's an integer variable. I'm calling it health, and I'm going to say every blue brick has a health of 2. And I'm going to make this integer public, meaning that other classes are going to be able to get at the health and read the health. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back to my ball, and I'm going to treat it very much like a normal brick. So I already have code that does all this stuff if it hits a normal brick. Now I've got to kind of figure out what I'm going to do if I hit a blue brick. And a lot of it's going to be similar, but I'm no longer looking to see if I hit a normal brick. I want to see if I hit a blue brick object. So everywhere I see brick, I'm going to replace it with blue brick, like so. And I'm going to store that in a variable called bb. So if we hit a blue brick, it's going to be stored in this thing called bb. And just like we do up here, if bb is not null, then what that means is we've hit a blue brick. So what do we want to do if we hit a new brick? Well, a lot of the same stuff that we did here. So I'm going to copy a, a lot of this. I'm going to copy, well, maybe not. I'm going to copy this much. I want to make a sound. And I also want the ball to go the other way. Okay, so let's see what happens here. All right, so now it's making a sound and it's bouncing off of the brick. I haven't told the brick to go away, so it's not going away, which is good for now. And now I'm going to go back to the ball and I'm going to say when the ball hits a blue brick, we are going to alter the health value of the brick. So by giving the health, by making this variable here inside of blue brick, you can think of it that every blue brick has a health of two. So if I hit a brick, what I want it, a blue brick, what I want to do is take away one from the health and if the health is now zero, I want to make it disappear. So, oops, I'm going to go back to the ball. And right after the ball moves, I'm going to say, if, or sorry, I lied. First, I want to take away. So I'm going to take away one from the blue bricks health. So how do I do that? I go BB, because remember, BB is the blue brick that we hit. That's what we stored it as. So I say, you know that blue brick we hit called BB? Well, I want to take away one from the health value, like so. So this will take away one from the health value. And if that health value is equal to zero, then now, at this point, we want to remove it from the world, and we want to add some score, and we also want to add to the brick count. So now I'm going to take all that stuff from there, I'm going to put it here, so I'm going to remove BB from the world, I'm going to add, let's add 10, let's make these ones worth a little bit more, and we're going to add to the brick count. All right, so let's see. If this works properly, we should have to hit these bricks twice in order for them to go away. One, one on that one. Ah, it worked. There you go. You can see it's working. I have to hit them twice, and only after I hit them twice do I get score and do they go away. And then that allows me to get to the rest of the bricks. Keep going. Oh. There we go. So it looks like it's working. And the other thing that I can do is I can do some, I can have some cool little effects where I can actually change the color of the brick too. And to do that, it's a little bit more complicated. And we'll start with that in our next tutorial. But what we're going to do is when we hit a brick, a blue brick, it's going to change to a different color 
before we take it away next time.